so I wanted to go over some of the products that we're using um, to combat soil-borne pests just as preventative measures so that we don't have any issues um, and just show you you know a lot of it's redundant um, for a home grower maybe you only want to use one or two because it's cost prohibitive obviously as you scale up it can be cost prohibitive as well but you're also dealing with a lot larger crop that you can lose and so maybe maybe all of these make sense for you um, and we can talk a little bit about what they do and how they do it and the redundancies and the interactions um, between all the different products and um, and, and just go over um, kind of how we use them and what we do with them um, here in our garden. All right, so here are some of the products um, that we use for soil-borne pests in living soil. And again, this can be redundant. If you're in a smaller home grow and finances are an issue, maybe using all of these things is, is too much and maybe just using all of them in general is too much. But when you do scale up, you wanna try to protect yourself as best as possible. And so currently we are implementing all of these in our soil. Um, and I can talk about different interactions and things we've seen thus far and um, just go over, you know, kind of what they are, how they work, things like that. Um, so first on this end, we have predators. This is a Stratiolalaps, I believe is what you call them because they got renamed. I'm old, so I know them as Hypoaspis miles. I can tell you how old I am. Um, it's a predator mite and um, they will go through the soil. Usually what we've seen is if you use any kind of avocado product, like it just straight, straight avocado tech, or if you're doing like the avocado toast, like we're doing under the rocks, um, it, it does help to keep their populations up. And I have seen when you're not using Bavaria bassiana, um, they tend to stay so high that you don't have to replace them. Now here we are also using Bavaria bassiana, so this is the second application I've made of these in two months because I have noticed our numbers have gone down dramatically. Now, if you read studies um, about the interaction of Bavaria bassiana and Hypoaspis miles, supposedly they will kind of work together and that the Bavaria bassiana will diminish their numbers but not to a degree that will wipe them out. I don't know that we're 100% wiped out, but I hardly see any at all and it's very abnormal from how we normally do things and we're applying Bavaria bassiana once a week and I feel that that is definitely what is currently happening. So this is a reapplication. Um, this is a bag of 125,000. I think I have three of these um, that'll go into our flower room. And now this is uh, a bottle of rove beetles and so there's a thousand in this. I will say what I am noticing because we're doing the avocado toast here um, where we just spread avocado on the bottom of the rocks that are on the top of our soil, our row beetle populations seem to be very high. I actually just brought some in because we're going to put these in veg because we haven't applied any in veg yet. And so that's what these row beetles are, are actually for is for the veg space because our flower space seems to be just jumping off with them. So um, it, it doesn't seem like we're going to need a reapplication of those at all um, in flower and those numbers are holding tight. And if you look in the uh, under the avocado toast tech, under the rocks where we're doing the avocado, you can see larvae going everywhere and they're, they're definitely populating. And so that seems to be doing really well. And the Bavaria bassiana doesn't seem to be affecting them at all. If so, it's so minute that I can't even tell. And, and, and that makes sense because they're supposed to play well together. And then so here is a uh, Biocirus WP. This is a one pound bag. This will go in um, a 100 gallon tank of water roughly. And so that's how much one pound will do. And I believe I spoke with a guy at the, at the company that makes this and he said to break it down, it's like one tablespoon per gallon, I guess, is if you wanted to go small. It does leave residue. Um, I'm messing right now with doing some sort of um, filtering uh, because our, fil our inline filter with our water pump is getting just clogged. It'll clog like four different times before you're able to even pump the tank out. And so I'm gonna start adding this in a compost tea bag and doing it that way and then we aerate it anyways and so that way it can try to catch a lot of uh, the particulates that don't dissolve and so for those that don't know Bavaria bassiana is a uh, fungus and it's oh i have a hard time saying endopathogenic maybe uh, basically it, it goes in into the 
insects via the orifices. It grows inside, it kills them. And then um, other insects that can come in contact with them, it can spread. And um, it, it's great to use to ward off um, things like root aphids. And so it does work well. And I, I believe it works best with soft body. If I think that's what it directs it, uh, what it directly affects is soft body. And so that's soft body insects. And so that's why I believe our hypoastus miles seem to be getting wiped out. Um, so um, we're using that. And then most people have heard of nematodes. Here, you know, we apply nematodes once a week. Um, this is the, uh, what is it, Steiner, Steiner Nema Felatia. Yeah, you can tell I barely graduated high school. Anyways, I just call these the SF um, nematodes. And so we apply these once a week. Um, this is the OMRI listed type so that um, you can use it in organic production because it's just the carrier that they're on. And um, application rate on these is anywhere from 1 million to 2 million per gallon of water. And so this is a 250 million bag. And so our water tank is 100 gallons. And we don't always give 100 gallons. Sometimes it's only 35 or 40 gallons in there. And so we can do the kind of do the math based off of that with, with the volume of what's in this bag. And um, those will attack larvae, uh, fungus gnats, root aphids, uh, I believe thrips, and things like that. And they are supposed to stay in the soil indoors in these pots for a couple of weeks. Um, I've looked at them under a microscope and I've definitely seen them for a couple of weeks after application, but we do it every week to try to keep, we apply them every week to try to keep their numbers super duper high. Now I know I made a post before about using nematodes in living soil and that was really directed towards like home grows and smaller grows. Um, all of these products can still be used in a home grow, but we're obviously in our, in our uh, commercial grow and we're using these uh, to protect you know, a lot of money. And so we're going to apply more often than we would in a home grow because we, we don't want to take a lot less chance. Now this, we buy in a 16 gallon bucket. That's why I have it in this little container. Um, this is natural. I've done a video about it. It's a strain of bacillus that attacks the fungus gnat larva. Honestly, with everything else that we use, this is probably massive overkill to even use this. But again, we'd rather be redundant um, than to have any issues. And so far we have zero fungus gnats. We literally don't even have one. We do have some sticky traps out, yellow sticky cards out um, to check for populations. And so far all we're catching is our rope beetles. So there's that. And we've caught a few flies actually. Um, so um, these, like I said, this is a second application. If you're in a smaller grow and you keep your avocados up and you're not using Bavaria bassiana, I've never had to reapply these. I've had them last for years and years and just keep repopulating. And that's very normal. Uh, the rove beetles currently, again, in our, our grow right now, even with Bavaria bassiana, they're repopulating like crazy and their numbers are staying up really, really high. The Bavaria bassiana, we're using it once a week. That's the uh, recommended application to get the most out of it. Um, and that's just a soil drench that we water in. And then the uh, nematodes, we're also using once a week. Um, and we're doing roughly the 1 million because it's preventative instead of the 2 million because, you know, as you scale up, it just gets more and more expensive. And again, this is a redundant thing. And I'll be checking that over time, uh, taking soil samples and looking at the microscope. And if we don't see our numbers are high enough, we'll bump it up and that'll be fine. Um, and then the natural, we're using it once a week as well. And its use rate is, uh, I think it's suggested use rate is a teaspoon a gallon. I've always used a tablespoon a gallon because it just works. Um, since it's redundant and it's in this situation, we could probably back down on that. And we might end up doing that at some point, but right now we're super just playing it all safe and you know, we wanna make sure we have no issues and then we can start tweaking things as we go along. Um, but technically on paper, all of these things are supposed to interact well together. The only, the only issue I'm seeing thus far is our uh, Stradiolae laps, AKA hypoaspis miles, just the population isn't staying at all where it needs to be. And so we're doing a reapplication. And so we'll have to, we'll have to look at that over time and, and see what that's gonna cost us and, and see uh, how often we wanna do that and see if we need to back off anything else. But I, I you know, it's just gonna take time and, and to look at the soil and take samples and just look at uh, how we're applying and what we're applying and seeing how they affect each other. But so far we have zero pest issues um, and everything's working well. And uh, yes, this, if you use all of this at once, that could be overkill. But again, if you want to um, 
compare this, you know, if you want to like, I don't say dumb it down, but just use less of these, use less products in general. Um, these are a really good start, especially if you're already using like avocado tech or the avocado toast tech, because your numbers are going to stay up real high. And then nematodes are obviously, you know, a go-to, I would say as well. And then the natural, um, the very Bassiana is a great product, but I personally have never used it in my personal growth. Uh, I've never needed it. I've never had any issues. I've never had any root aphids or anything like that. But since we are larger here and we want to have a bigger insurance policy, we are using it. Um, and, uh, you know, it does unfortunately interact. It, it appears with the uh, Stradiole laps. So. And here's uh, one of the rocks we do avocado toast tech on. Basically, we just slather the bottom with avocados. And uh, actually, this one just has chunks under it too. It's really hard to tell, but you can definitely see grove beetle larvae going everywhere, um, adult grove beetles, but I'm not seeing the stratios or uh, AKA hypoaspis at all. So that's why we're doing a reapplication. It does seem like their numbers are low, but we'll just have to watch over time and see what happens. But I mean, the grove beetles in here are insane. There's so many, uh, their numbers are definitely staying up. Um, but those are some of the products we're using. Um, in our garden, you can use some of them, all of them. Uh, you know, you just got to do what's best for your garden, and depending on the size and, and what you want to do, uh, they're all effective in their own different ways. And I believe the biggest and important, the most important thing is just be redundant and make sure you're not relying on one thing in case that one thing happens to fail. Um, and uh, please uh, subscribe to us on our uh, YouTube channel, and if you're on Instagram, come follow us on Instagram at Redbud Soil Co and uh, like our Facebook page, Redbud Soil Company. And uh, there's more information on our website and uh, our blog is full of tons of good stuff for you to learn about gardening and living soil in general. And that's, uh, you can find that at our website at uh, redbudsoilcompany.com.